So in this second episode of the farm issue, we're basically going to go out to northern Utah, Joey and I, visit farmers and try to get the lowdown on farming in Utah. But before I want to do that, I wanted to give a little background about me and why I'm producing YouTube videos now. So I studied documentary filmmaking and journalism at the University of Utah. I graduated in 2002 and then I did a little stint in the Olympics. I worked in an international broadcasting center um, and I totally saw the potential of working in the field of documentary film and especially telling stories in depth. I feel like I could find the niche telling stories in depth in Utah using short format documentaries online. And my background, how I paid my way through school was I was a web developer. And so I thought I would try to start a website, produce films, put videos out on the, on the website. This was kind of before YouTube was really popular. I had my own built-in player. Um, but while the website gained popularity and a lot of people were viewing the videos, I could not get advertisers to spend a lot of money on it. And so I started a pamphlet to promote the website, which I'll show a picture of right here. And the pamphlet was basically a means to promote the website. And I, I got about eight or 10 uh, what I called sponsors, and they loved the pamphlet, readers loved the pamphlet. And so I found myself becoming a publisher. And my idea to have a video full of, or a website full of videos kind of um, fell to the back seat. And instead I started publishing a magazine and um, every month we printed more and more copies, got more and more advertisers. We went from 24 pages up to 64 pages within the first three years. Now we're about 80 pages most months and we're in 900 locations statewide. Utah Stories Magazine um, is becoming a, a household name in Utah and that's great, but my vision is video. I feel like it's a superior media. I love the written word, I love writing, but I love showing when it's possible to show. So in this video, with that background, my dog Joey and I, we go out, hit up farms in northern Utah. We attempt to find these guys I met a few years ago, way out in Promontory Point, Utah. I'm gonna show a map of what I'm talking about. But we went out and I forgot a piece of equipment, had to come back, um, but this is our day. Roll the tape. Backyard chickens. Eleanor, get out of here. You might say I'm something of an urban farmer. I have a little house with a pretty big yard, and I love backyard chickens. I love growing vegetables. <clears throat> I love growing my own food as much as I can. And I also love writing about farmers. And last year we produced a farm issue. And this year's farm issue, we decided we had to capture the problem in video. Only video could show the extent and the problem with suburban sprawl. T-H-E-L-D-O-N. I've started, I'm 47, mm -hmm. and started with my dad when I was eight years old, so I've seen, you know, some of the great farmers we've dealt with. I mean, we still have some of their families, but they are passing away now, and a lot of the farmers are being sold off. Yeah. So it's making it tougher, so. Mm -hmm. I, I keep hearing of new, young, you know, younger farmers are gonna try it. 
<laughs> the problem is, is getting the land, you know. If the land's in the family, it's a lot easier to do. But once that family sells that land off, it's, you know how much land's going for. Yeah. It's hard to, you know, do a crop that's going to, you know, bring in $5,000 a year and, and pay for property. So, you know, so and I, I have people every year, they ask for Macintosh apples, wine sap apples. Um, there's a, what else? I'm trying to get some black twig apples. Those are all old school apples. They're really wonderful, but you can't even find them anymore. That's the face of an extremely bored dog who wants to get out of the car. We're on Utah's Highway 89, the Fruit Highway. in Clearfield. We've got 35 acres of sweet corn. We've already planted 20 acres of that. We've got 68 acres of orchard here. I want you guys to come see what we're doing so that you know when that blackberry comes in, you go, oh yeah, that just came in down the street there by the Willard Cemetery. That's all you need to say. You go, it just came in right down by the Willard Cemetery. So let's do a tour. So important because you're gonna we do not spray any of our vegetables except the sweet corn so everybody say that we do, we do not, not spray any, any of our vegetables, vegetables except the sweet, sweet corn. corn who's had a worm in their sweet corn who's ever had a worm at the end of the corn if we don't spray you get this quick so this is the first piece of land we bought in 1997 from a Japanese farmer see that pole up there on the top it starts clear from there and see that dead tree over there? It goes all the way over there and then all the way straight down. And if you see really close, see those light, see those lighter colored trees up there on top? Those are apricots and they're loaded this year. See the peach trees? A lot of these trees right here, and we have a lot of those, these are peach or nectarine trees. Then there's apple trees. See right in the middle, past that second section? Those are apple trees. And then the cherry trees you can't see, but they're really tall trees. And, and everything like that so this is where all the tree a lot of the tree fruit is grown okay this is about a third of what we have so let's go ahead and we're gonna drive across the street important for us to get hold of Mindy or Tori or don't ever try to run out of things okay especially on big weekends and things like that we want to look even at the end of the day and even throughout the day and kind of say god we're gonna I can tell right now we're gonna need more tomatoes because they're going like hotcakes you know what I mean for a little while and they'll really get going. Okay, everyone stand by the hoop house and I'll take your picture. Oh, yes. Mindy, do you want me to, to get some of me part of Yeah, why don't you take it and then Dad, you be in it with them too. Make sure don't forget that. Man, I buy peaches from you guys any day of the week. Um, Barn, I don't think I've seen this. This thing's awesome. Oh. I want to build another one and add on to the fruit stand. But oh, we didn't quite great. Get, yeah, I needed it bad. So this helps out a lot. So should, you, should we go out in the field? Maybe we could be here, but uh, yeah. well, out in the field would be cool. Yeah, that's what yeah. These trees are looking really good. Oh, yeah. Wow, those look great already. I know. And then we'll thin, we'll thin the heck out of them. You know what I mean? Uh huh. Come on over here. These are nice trees. 
Yeah, we'll be thinning in about two weeks. We'll start thinning all these out, but it's gonna be cool. Yeah, that's great. It's gonna be awesome. Did you get all, did you plant all these in your um, time here? Yeah, I've been planting all these. This was kind of the last section to plant because it was the oldest. It was one of the older, well, I don't take that back. So I started up blocks up on top, just whatever trees were the oldest, I've been rotating them out. And I still have a little bit of work to do down here, but I'm, I don't like pulling trees out because, you know, it takes three years to get something. Mm -hmm. So I'll hold on to it as long as I can. What I've been doing is planting in between and then I'll take those old ones out. And you can see, you know, oh, missed yeah. a couple here. But these, this has kind of stayed in production the whole time because I've been doing that. And these trees now have been in, this is the third year and they're, they're ready to go. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's paid off. That's awesome. See how I took this one out and it was dying down and see that one there. And, Oh uh, yeah. And they're all gonna just kind of come out eventually. That's so, a big stump. A lot of people just do all blocks, but I've had to, down here I wanted to keep it all going. So that's been great. So so we got kind of some themes we're doing with these stories. Cool. Um, the the major one that I thought would, let me see if I can, I'll fix yeah, you this way. The, the major one that I thought that you um, kind of are faced with is the issue of suburban sprawl, yeah. like obviously the city is expanding. This we have like the Wasatch Front is one of the whole one of the fastest growing areas in the right. whole country. Yeah. And how is there? How do you do you think we can prevent or at least um, decrease the amount of great arable land, farmland that we're building over? Oh God! See, this is. I've really looked at this close since I bought my farm in 97. I mean, I've literally seen three of, three of my best friends finish up farming. I've noticed when it hits the third generation, there's so many families involved and if the person farming it hasn't bought them out, then everybody wants to kind of liquidate because there's just too much money involved. And it's too hard for one guy to buy it all out because they want development prices. So I've just seen that happen when it hits third generation and if you look at a map of Utah it's no kidding it's just a, if you just look at it, it's just a narrow strip mm -hmm. it's from from Salt Lake on up look at it really close I mean Sue we're I mean it's just nothing left if you really look close mm -hmm. there's the lake and everything that way all the lakes coming up and then there's the mountains here and it's just a skinny little strip of land from Salt Lake City up so there's a lot of pressure on this area up here and it's you know it's sad i want to farm this till the day i die i mean i love it i put too much into it i mean i'm in production full production now you know mm -hmm. so i'm way motivated to just really take care of them take care of the trees and they'll take care of me you know what i mean mm -hmm. and uh i just don't know how you're gonna slow it down though yeah the guy, it's one just of the... so it's just so complicated because of too many there's too many People involved, there's too many family members involved, and one somebody will start pushing the issue. In it. Well, if they if they tightened up zoning and just said this area where the soil topsoil is so deep, yeah, and the water is so close, is not going to be available to development. Do you see that? Being well, that's a problem. Potential? So, I mean, I'm. I want to do anything I want with my land. That once you own land, you really don't want somebody telling you what to do with it. So, I mean, that's pretty brutal to say that. It's got to come from the family and what their commitment is. Because I just, I mean, it's not fair to control by law. So, I just, yeah, you know what I'm saying. I don't think you can really do that. I don't think that's what the good old U.S. of A. is about. Tell you what you can do with your land. Because, yeah, the thing is, if it was, you know, if um, you know, to me, this is sustainable. I mean, I, I can do this. I can make great living, and uh, and uh, I can employ a lot of people, and you know, I mean, and keep keep it going, and make it work for a lot of people. I mean, I got good people helping me. I got a lot of girls that are going to help us sell, and it's fun. You know, it's a fun livelihood. But if you lose that, and you know. You know, there's some things that have kind of kicked it in. That we were at a meeting the other day, and 
the government wants us to be uh, GAP certified, which is good accounting practice, good agricultural practice, which I totally agree with. But there's some guys that are just like, oh, it's hard enough to farm. I, I don't have the energy to do that. And so one guy walked out of me and just said, I'm done. You know, it's just too much. Just the straw that broke the camel's back. Hmm. So there's 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 a few government issues that that have come that have changed, which are good. You never we've never seen one bad piece of fruit or a problem with fruit in Utah ever. If you look up the history, I've looked it up, mm -hmm. Google it. And I've never seen a problem with anything that's listeria or anything that's going on. And that's because it's picked so close. It's not handled very much, and it's you know, distributed close, and it's pretty safe it's from the tree to the... We're not exporting. We're not, we're not we're exporting, not we're not vegetables. doing a lot of packing necessarily, mm -hmm. uh, to the extent some people are, and it's safe fruit. Uh, but there's just things like that, and you just kind of add a few things like that, and then if you have a bad year, you had a lot of frost. And then if you had something, it just eventually, I mean, the people that quit just go, just gonna sell. Mm -hmm. I know, I'm a millionaire over a few times over mm -hmm. I'll just sell it. so that's the problem is the you know yeah because farming's and, hard Far uh, farming yeah. is hard people have no idea you have no idea how stressful it is how everything you got to be right on top of things if you want good fruit you got to stay right on top of it when you need to do what you need to do when you need to do it you know when mother nature says hey it's time to do this you got to do it got to water when they when it's time to water you can't you can't have excuses or you're not going to get a really good crop and people aren't going to buy your fruit so it's demanding enough and then when things like that come in and then when the family's you know squalling over it then it's just just one last straw and they just say hmm, let's sell it you know yeah that's the problem yeah and uh do you, so you see gotta any have, you anything gotta, that took that I mean, so the average age of the farmer in the United States, I found out, is 60 years old. Yeah. And, is that and, amazing? And, it is. And it's, it's just like... Who's going to take it over? Yeah, there's you know not I mean? a lot of kids wanting to go into it's agriculture. Yeah. And, and I see part it's of the really problem true. is farming isn't treated like a profession so much anymore. Right. Like you have professional doctors, professional <laughs> attorneys, know. professional you know, biomedical engineers, but why, why is farming, I mean, you, you guys are growing our question. food, you're sustaining our food supply. You're why, why you're isn't it getting so right the, on. the respect that it deserves? You're so right on. I read an article that came out in a magazine. Farmers are the new rock stars. Cause I'm telling you, this is not an easy profession and it might look like you know, might not be one of the most sought after professions, but if people really knew, you know, what's involved and how much, how rewarding it is. And, and, um, you know, you're taking something, you're putting, to, you're putting a great orchard together. You're helping produce fruit. You're letting mother nature and all the elements of nature come together. It's incredible experience, but it doesn't get a lot of, um, you know, status if you will. But, uh, man, I love it. And, um, there are, the problem is there aren't too many people that can do it. And then another point is, is coming into the business. Who, who can afford to even come in, you know? And that's what I'm saying. Unless you'd inherited the land right now, I'm looking at it. I mean, I bought my last piece in 98, no 98. And then I bought another piece in 2000 and I felt like I was just fortunate to get it at a half decent agricultural price. Otherwise I couldn't have done it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And that's the problem is who's going to be able to come in? I mean, you can't dish out a million bucks to come and farm. I mean, well, you came in in your middle in, age, right? Yeah, I came in at middle age in 1997. You, so you already had some capital. I and had, we, were, we were okay. And so, mm -hmm. but somebody else doing that, I just don't see how it's going to happen. I really don't see how it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And that's scary to me. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's part of the part of the issues at hand is just like you said I mean I'm 57 I consider myself one of the youngest farmers really really I mean seriously I don't know too many people that are much younger than me in Utah that are farming I mean there's a few young guys but I don't know anybody who's owning orchards or anything like that mm -hmm. 
So that's kind of scary, you know, and I'm getting and, older. And I heard from, like I interviewed the owner of Sakos Fruits. Yeah. He buys a lot of local. Everybody who comes there wants to buy local. Sure. But he says there's nobody yeah. planting trees. Nope. And he needs more and more tree yeah. fruit. Exactly. And it's just not there. So the it's price not. of local goes up. So only the rich are able to afford to buy local. Good point. And everybody else is buying the stuff imported from Mexico with all the pesticides. Right. And here's the here's a inter, inter, uh, very important statistic. In Utah, we only raise 3% of our agriculture needs. Have you heard that number? Yeah. Saw that on the on the state ag thing. Well, I, I think 3% of fruits and vegetables. Fruits and right? vegetables, that's what I meant. 3% of fruits and vegetables. I mean, we raise 500% of our meat products. And we have, you know, we're, yeah. we're an outsourcer on that, but it's a good point. It's scary, and people really don't, I mean, people appreciate it, but they still don't really 100% appreciate what we've got right now and what we need, need to enjoy. You know what I'm saying? The way you've been able to survive and thrive is direct to consumer. Yeah, direct right? to consumers to be able to think about it. I mean, if and if people think this way, if I'm handing, I'm I shop the same way. If I know I'm handing a dollar to somebody and they're going to get keep most of that, you know what I'm saying? And it's all from Utah. It's going to stay in Utah. That's a that's a huge deal. I mean, I get twice as much when I sell retail. You know, I have more expenses like my sellers and people that are helping me run it around, but. Um, it's a big deal to me to get that extra money. So you and kind of realized that in your 30s, that yeah, that was the model that, could, the model. that we could use to make it and work? And there's a lot of farmers do that too. They want to sell retail and have people come by from them and directly. And I mean, there's now 44 farmers in Marcos. That was last year. I don't know how many there are now, but that's a big deal for us, you know. Can't even make it to all of them. Just get a pick and choose now. but. That's changed a lot over the years, and there's a good support out there. People are really coming out to the markets and roadside stands, and our stand did better here last year than it ever has, but that was also due because there weren't as many peaches. It was a little bit of a cool year at the beginning, and things didn't, oh, I don't see again any better. I don't know how, how you're gonna stop it. Yeah. I, I really don't. Um, Nelson's winding down. Greg Young's done. Randy Matthews is done. I don't, I don't know if you want to put all those names in necessarily. Well, now you mentioned that Nelson. Sakos has been buying from Nelson's yeah, for 50 he's years. winding so. down. I mean, seriously, these are guys I've farmed with that like taught me how to farm, and they're done. I mean, really, right before my eyes, just like, we're done. Mm -hmm. You know, it's crazy. And, well, and then, and then, old man Val Carsey died. You know, the guy across from Maddox, he died this year. He's done. They're, oh, really? they're winding down. No, uh, their, their kids can't take it over. They've got full-time jobs. I mean, they're going to mess around and do some things there. But, I mean, when the old-timer buys, the, the, the next person that should step in, they're not stepping in. Because and they if, just don't see the income? They don't see, I think, a lot of factors. They don't see the income. They're being forced by others. They can't afford to buy the land. Um, cost of, you know, getting into it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The other, as soon as one family member dies, you know, think about it. As soon as the parents are gone, boom, the kids want it. That's that's the huge pressure that I see. Um, and it makes, you know, and they start looking at. It. I always look at it when you develop it. You only sell it once, but I'm selling every year. You know what I mean? And prices are get good now. People, prices are firm and good, and they should they should be paying 20 bucks for a half bushel of peaches. And, you know, they're finally up here hitting that and well they're only gonna higher. get better too should get better and then they're worth it that's less than a dollar a pound that's still man mm -hmm. you know so and it's a real value and it's incredible this is an incredible area to grow fruit i've told people that up here i'll just be amazed we'll be a few degrees warmer because of that lake because of the rock because of the situation and we'll just be just a few degrees warmer and we'll we won't freeze out i'm going what you know, it's mm -hmm. just crazy. So there's certain areas that are made to grow fruit, and, and uh, this is one of them. And so, I mean, I'm not going to quit. I, I love it. You know, I well, put too awesome. much in. I put too much into it. It's, it's a there, lot of work. Is there a chance your family will keep going? Well, we're like, we're starting to figure that out, and we want to keep it going. And I've told the the kids, I go, we got to keep this going. You know what I mean? We got to figure out a way to make it work. Mm -hmm. because um, you know 
we've worked hard at it. We got some good things going now. And well, you use, I mean, you're using drip lines. You're using, using drip lines. solar panels, right? Yeah, we're using your solar panels. We're, I'm certified organic in my blackberries now. And then we just planted 8,000 raspberries. We're going to do those certified organic. That's a trend, and that's really tricky, especially keeping the weeds out. But we're figuring it out. And, uh, you know, the problem with farming is there's always another project. So I've got to learn how to kind of dial down. I've got to become a farmer. This is what I want to do. Well, I did it because we started on the retail and we we're, ma were making money at it. You know what I mean? And it's very rewarding. And I like being my own boss. And I like working hard. And I like creating, seeing the fruits of my labor, if you will, and putting things together and sitting back and just wow this is cool you know what I mean that's that's what kept me motivated taking an old orchard cleaning it up putting the trees in that's what we did with Willard it was just all fallow and got it going and then maintaining and it's very rewarding it's awesome and people have been really good to you we have a really solid following and try to give them the best fruit we can work hard at it got really good they knew where their money was going it's going to great kids great workers you know staying all in utah it's way cool you know so it's fun for us and we feel like we're doing a service and you know it brings us you know satisfaction that way too so yeah it's, well you're it's, you're standing at the farmer's markets just jamming yeah, thanks man all the whole time it's well, that's great. true you gotta bring your you gotta have good stuff or you're, you're not gonna sell it and, Mm -hmm. You know, I'm gonna, I wanna get as good as I can, so learned a lot. Hope to keep getting better too. We're, I'm right on top of things right now. We're, you can see how good the orchards look. They're in great yeah, shape. Yeah, sure do. See the color of the leaves, and man, it's just like looking awesome. Weeds are out. We already dripped in here once, and things are looking awesome. And so, uh, you know, that's real rewarding. and. It's risky. Last year, right this t coming up in June, hailstorms <sighs> to the north and the south, really, and everybody will get their get their turn, and uh, they'll just slice peaches and rip up the leaves, and it's very uh, it's kind of isolated. It's never just the whole thing. It's just little pockets. And when we start seeing really really dark gray clouds in, it's just like who's gonna get it today? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So. We got a lot, there's a real risk this year, although can you see it's kind of tapering down, I feel like, and it's not quite as wet as it used to be. Last year it got pretty nasty up here. Yeah. And around the place. I mean, you saw it in Salt Lake. Were you in Salt Lake when that hailstorm came through? Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Was it bad that, here? No, we didn't get anything. Oh, wow. That's, That's how great. isolated hailstorms are is, you know, people, oh, did you get hit with hail? I go, no, it's just like, it's usually so isolated on a hailstorms, and that's how they work, I guess. Yeah, the U, it wasn't. Too, yeah, it wasn't too bad, but right. where my house was, we got like an inch of hail. Yeah, hand. yeah. So, so so far we're looking good, and just kind of go at it. But we're motivated and want to keep doing it. And people need, you know, people need to be easy on us and be nice to us and make it worth their time. And it's hard work. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's really it's hard enough just to farm without having to deal with everything else you know what I mean just farming alone it's hard enough but then you got to sell it and you got you to get in all the farmers markets you got to move it you got to work with sellers you got to work with the pickers and all so you that. teamed up with your wife and she yeah she managing handles all the girls she manages all the girls so she does a great job yeah. so we have to split it up but we need we're trying to get some more people to help us so that we don't get burned out too bad you know mm -hmm. so that's been working out good but yeah, that's cool. Yeah, it's doing really good. We got some good production years ahead of us. So that's what I'm excited about. You know, I'm in full production. That's finally, finally, you know what I mean? Except for that tree right there, you know, a couple here and there. Mm -hmm. I've almost got this whole thing maxed out. So we're excited about that. Yeah, I think fruit trees are Fruit great, trees are okay. so cool. Okay, come on. Cameron is my second 